Okay, uh, hello friends. Uh, welcome to this live uh, interaction session uh, for the course on introduction to research. My name is uh, Arun Tangirala and uh, I will try and uh, see if I can answer your questions. We have about uh, 39 questions that we have uh, managed to compile offline uh, from the participants of this course and then of course we have a few questions that are coming live. I think uh, uh, at least we will spend the first 10 minutes in answering, taking some of the questions uh, offline and uh, then we will intersperse this discussion with the questions that are coming live. So this is a question that has come from uh, one Mr. Rahul Dubey and the question reads, during literature survey and while reading books on topics, we came across so much information, most of which is useless for our current work. Sorry. How to bring out the best possible details from the overwhelming pool of information? Now, this is a very standard question that troubles every researcher at the beginning stage and gradually the researcher learns as to you know what is useful and so on and also there is an art to all of this. Now, there is no uh, clear cut answer to this, but let me actually give you a very simple example. When a goldsmith is making an ornament, uh, you know that of course a goldsmith will take gold and uh, some adulterant has to be there. But in the process of making this uh, ornament, you do actually end, uh, I mean the goldsmith does end up ma uh, wasting some of the gold and we are charged for the uh, wastage as well. Now why I gave you this uh, analogy is when we are carrying out research, we are actually in this case we are searching for gold and in this search for gold or treasure, certainly you are going to come across many, many uh, you know pieces of information that may have no bearing or relevance to what you are ultimately planning to do. And that is also the case when one is browsing through let us say 200 to 300 TV channels that exist today and you are searching for a very, uh, for a channel that is of relevance and use to you. So the answer to how we go about uh, you know, browsing through this wealth of information that is there uh, has to be only experienced and I will give you a few guidelines on that. But let me also comment on this uh, word useless that has been used. I think that is a very sweeping word to use. Which information is actually useful and useless uh, is absolutely relative and it is hard to say at the beginning as to what is going to be useful and uh, what is going to be not because some of the things that we may end up learning do have uh, a direct bearing right? and some others may have an indirect bearing. And uh, when a particular topic actually comes handy, it is uh, very hard to say. Vani, can you close the door? Uh, so, uh, what one begins with is of course, it is like you are uh, venturing into an unknown city, you do not know uh, what is uh, a place worth seeing. It is inevitable that you search through this pile of information, but then let us say you know your research problem. The best way is to back, uh, work backwards. So let us say I am working on uh, a problem relating to, uh, let us say, simulating the system. Uh, that is uh, one aspect of my research is simulation. And let us say, you know, I am going to simulate a continuous time process, <coughs> a dynamical process. So when I am going to simulate a continuous time dynamical process, obviously some ordinary differential equations or part partial differential equations are going to be involved which means I need to have some grip on calculus. Now that is the theory part of it. Then I may be using a particular simulation tool. I need to understand how that simulation tool works. So one starts listing what are the topics that are uh, or the, the, the what is the theory relevant to this uh, research problem that I am working on and then gradually figures out what is the best way, uh, what is the best information, relevant information to that particular topic. So, step one, look at your research problem, 
draw a, a, a jot down the list of topics that you think are relevant you can sit with your guide and you can ask well you know what are the uh, foundational concepts involved in my research suppose i'm working on an optimization problem uh, then i'll have to learn the basics of optimization then comes a specific thing suppose i'm working on optimization let's say uh, of a mixed integer programming uh, there's a mixed integer programming problem that i'm looking at then i have to go into specifics of that optimization so if you work backwards typically the time that you would spend on uh, reading maybe stuff that is not relevant to your work can be minimized uh, which whatever has been called as uh, useless unfortunately here yeah? you can minimize that so work backwards and really uh, help you a lot then there is this other thing where you don't you do not the situation where you do not have a research problem defined up front many uh, research guides uh, follow that policy i am for example of that belief that the student should be given the freedom to explore uh, a certain field and uh, figure out uh, by through a literature review as to what is the hot problem or what are the current uh, trending problems that uh, really uh, are asking uh, burning questions and then pick one of those uh, for your research in that case of course you will actually end up exploring a lot of literature which uh, a, a part of which may not actually make its way at all to your thesis but that's all right it's absolutely all right one should never think that research is all about just focusing on your problem what happens is if you look at the journey of a researcher you begin with a lot of breadth and little depth and as you progress in your journey you will end up with a lot of depth and some breadth definitely you should have breadth because your future work your jobs everything is going to depend on not only the depth in your research but also what idea you have about the sister areas so the uh, the simple answer to this question is if you have your research problem defined work backwards list the topics list the concepts that are involved and start reading the books uh, or the papers articles and so on that are relevant and then gradually filter it out as your problem gets more and more defined you come to a stage where you figure out yeah you know i have just read enough to get started that is one point that i want to make uh, very clear here many researchers when beginners uh, of research when they begin they think that they have to continuously read for about 2 3 years and equip themselves with a lot of knowledge but that is not really uh, the best way to go because your research program is a time bounded program the scholarship is available only for a certain period of time it's best to do parallel processing uh, when if you think of a baby a baby doesn't say well until i learn to walk i will not eat baby learns to walk learns to eat learns to do many things at the same time likewise a baby researcher first reads uh, a bit of material uh, relevant material for about 2 months or a few months and then slowly gets started off the reading of information is an as a continual process it's an ongoing process a never ending one but once you have just read the enough material you can get started and then you read on a need basis so the initial parts of your reading will definitely involve some uh, exploration some breadth and so on but the moment you have latched on to the problem that's of interest to you then you start reading on a need basis so hopefully that gives some uh, answers if not a, a complete answer to the question so the second question again is from sir rahul dubey as uh, on how to achieve work life balance I, i i don't know exactly what is meant by this i i will interpret this as how do you balance your life between professional work and personal life that's what i'll assume that the uh, participant is asking well <clears throat> there is no formula for it. it it completely dependent on the individual but the fact is you need to have a personal life uh that is away from the professional life as well otherwise there is a very high probability that you can go crazy okay so it's important to balance and this uh, how much how many hours for work and how many hours for personal life it's very hard to really give a recommendation but i can give you again some guidelines typically i think this was also discussed in the course 
you do spend significant part of your uh, day, I mean, whatever your work time that has been given in the institution. Uh, you start with the day the institution begins and then go on and make sure that you make the best use of the time there because your guide, your colleagues, everyone is present during that time and uh, whatever facilities you need are available, if you need someone to help you, that person is available and so on. So, you make sure that you have given your best during that eight hours of uh, the day and then beyond that, if you need to stay, then many grad students do end up staying. There are many students that I have who stay for long hours, who sometimes come uh, at night and so on, but that's completely their personal choice. But it is important to make sure that you have some kind of uh, stress relieving activities, uh, maybe sports, maybe some entertainment and or reading books uh, or, you know, casual uh, socialization, casual conversations with your friends in the corridor, something that's not related to your research at all because that really helps in bringing a fresh uh, perspective. And above all of this, it's extremely important to have a good night's sleep. Sleep, as many research studies have shown, has a huge impact on a person's uh, thinking and health and so on. So, if your uh, situation permits you to sleep because there are some who have to perform experiments for prolonged hours, then during those days sleep, uh, you have to spend sleepless nights, but that cannot be, uh, that cannot go on for several weeks and months. So it's important to get a very good night's sleep. And second thing that one should keep in mind is somehow many researchers think that uh, research is just thinking about the problem when I'm at work and completely shutting down the, the thought process when I'm away, but that's not how it's, it works. Uh, actually, it has, it works in a different way. If you are uh, deeply engrossed in your research, even though you're away from work, you're, a part of your brain and a part of your mind is always thinking about the problem and that is what I call as finance, it's a tapasya. You will, uh, you're, uh, you're thinking about your problem whether it occupies the front seat or the back seat depends on what you are doing. But you can't really completely shut down and say, I am not going to think about my research for 10 days or 15 days. Then you will have to again do the digging and get to the same thought process and, and then move on. So you don't want to do that, but at the same time, you don't want to be completely preoccupied uh, with your work 24 hours. Alright, so um, there is a and there is another question, I am just going to take this one question from, one more question from Rahul and then we will come back if time permits to the other questions that Rahul has asked. <coughs> they, uh, I'll, uh, I'll ask this question, uh, I will take this question on how to solve issues to be going. Now that is a very delicate question in my opinion. It depends completely on the issue. There is no particular uh, uh, answer that can be given here because it's uh, uh, it can be only answered on a case by case basis and I don't know what issues uh, specifically uh, Rahul is referring to here but if you think that you have difficulty communicating to your supervisor about something then you should have a very open communication channel that's extremely important for a healthy research and for a healthy work life you should have very good communication uh, with your uh, supervisor. Talk openly about uh, certain things. I'm sorry? Just one minute break. After this. Keep one? Okay. Video early. So we'll just take a one minute break and we'll continue our discussion. Okay. Uh, what happened, Mani? <laughs> 